Okay, another thing that feels like home lately, I'm sure you all agree, are kids learning from home. But Dr. G just wants to remind parents, even though the kids are learning from home, you still wanna stay in close contact with their teachers. Hi, Dr. G. Hello. So it seems like communication with teachers is more crucial than ever. And harder this year. Even if your kids are in school, parents are not going to be in school much this year. So those usual opportunities to interact, get to know your kid's teacher, you know, before your kid is in trouble or you're worried about them or you're wondering why they were given something they were given, you're not dropping them off and saying hello or coming in for a school birthday or volunteering even in your school. So you don't have the opportunity to build relationship in the way that you have other years. Okay, so how can you build the relationships with teachers right now? One of the things you can do right away is start with a warm handshake over email. If you send a, a note to your child's teacher that is not asking a million questions and is not talking about how special your child is and what their needs are, but really is the same way you would interact at a back to school night, just a, hi, so glad to meet you. We're really excited for third grade, or this is something that my son is really looking forward to this year, or this is a great thing I heard about you. Please reach out if I can be of help in any way. That's yeah. it. That would feel great. That is not most of the emails teachers are getting right now. Oh my gosh, they must be overwhelmed too. I can't even imagine. <laughs> teachers so have been working all summer, and I shouldn't say working, I should say volunteering, because many of them are not paid for that time to try to adapt from what did happen in the spring to what they're working towards in the fall, no matter what the setting. We should be extra appreciative of teachers right now. How can we help transition to, because things are looking different this year, obviously, like traditions like Halloween, fall dances. It's like, how can we help these, these kids transition appropriately so they feel good? It's really hard to control our kids' feelings. If they're not feeling good, that feels like they're just paying attention. It's a lot of upheaval. However, we can talk to our kids about their favorite traditions and ask them, what's the feeling you get from it? Or what's your favorite part about it? And then just like we've been doing with quarantine birthdays, we can see what creatively could we do that's safe and get some of those same experiences or feelings if we focus on creating the connection and the feelings and less on the details of how we did it before, but look forward towards what we could do now. Yeah, how can they get more creative, right? Absolutely. I think that this year, uh, although I'm sure sale of Halloween candy will go down, we might mail Halloween packages starting in mid-October to good friends, or we might try to have a different kind of Halloween parade or party or experience. So communicate more than ever. Communicate more than ever and don't try to control your kids' feelings. There are lots of rules about their behavior, but we don't have rules about feelings as long as they can express them respectfully. So if your kid is frustrated or mad or lonely or sad, just hear it. Yeah, yeah. it is hard and I'm sorry. That's icky to feel that way. Yeah, all right, Dr. G, always great to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thank you.